This video will cover Year 8 Measurement Fundamentals, so these are C-level questions you should expect to see. Um, I'll put some time tags below for you so you can skip to the sort of questions that you'd like some help with and question numbers if you're following along on the test preview. Alright, so in Year 8 Geometry, what you guys are going to find is that you're going to get asked questions about polygons, okay? And that's two-dimensional shapes, and they're going to be the ones that you're used to seeing. So if you have a look at your um, formula sheet, you'll get this in the test. There's going to be things like rectangles, triangles, the occasional trapezium. You very seldom see a kite, but it can drop up every now and again. Circles are the new one, and you might get a question about a parallelogram. And the only 3D shapes that you guys will see are prisms and cylinders. So you won't see anything tricky like spheres or uh, uh, pyramids or anything like that. They'll just be regular um, 3D shapes, regular prisms. So think mainly rectangular prism and cylinder. They're going to be the two that you come up against most. And you'll see a couple of triangular prisms as well. Okay? And I'll show you how to tackle them. There are formulas for all of them but there's a better way of doing it as well. So I'll talk a little bit about both of those. So when you go up and you get started, all you're going to do is, first question's nice and easy. You guys have got uh, just a straight out rectangle here. So you might remember the area of a rectangle. It is length times the width. And if you're not sure, just duck over and check your formula sheet. Occasionally, you'll see this is base times height, but it means the same thing, times one side by the other. And if we go in and we substitute in, you can choose either side to be your length. So we'll make that 5.3, and our width will be 1.4. You'll get the chance to use a calculator in the test, and so you'll find that the area of the rectangle is going to be 7.42 millimetres squared. Now, the units are the thing in this topic that might catch people. You have to remember units. I won't take marks from you in fundamentals, but in applications I will as practice, okay, because next year you'll lose marks every time you forget your units. And this is a really nasty way of losing marks. We'll do a bit of work on unit conversion and units, but we call distances like perimeter millimetres or centimetres, metres, and we call area <coughs> the units squared, and volume becomes units cubed. All right, second one's a composite shape. So these will be made up of shapes that you know. So here what we can see is we've, we've got rectangles and we had a little bit of a look at a question like this one last time. There's two ways of doing this one. Last time I went through one of these with you, what I did was I broke the shape up into sort of three rectangles and I called them area one with a circle, area two, and area three, and we found the unknown sides. This time, I think it would be more efficient, for me at least anyway, you do it whichever way you like, but I see here that what I've actually got is a rectangle with a little square missing out of it. And that gives me the advantage of not having to do as much work, okay? So I can see these little dashes here. These mean that everything that's got a dash in it is going to be the same length. So this side's going to be 1.2. And so what I can see is that I've got a big rectangle here. And I've got a small square hidden in here. Can everyone see that? Okay. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do to solve this is I'm going to give them names. I'm going to call the green one area one, and I'm going to call the orange one area two. And I'm going to generate my own little formula, and I'm going to say that the area total, and I just call that area T, of this shape is going to be area one minus area two. And then I'm going to work them out individually. So I'll start with area one. Area one is a rectangle. So my formula tells me that that's going to be a length by width question. And I just come in and substitute in the numbers. So I've got 3.6 times 2. And I'm just getting that from these values here. Whoops, should have used the highlighter. This one here and here. I'm just checking as well that they're both the same units. They're both metres, so that's great. It's a nice straight substitution. 
And then I've also got area two. We might just quickly work out what that is. So this one's going to be 7.2. We don't have to worry about the units at this stage. It's no big deal. And then I'm going to have a look at area two. Area two is also a rectangle of sorts. It's actually a square, which is a perfect quadrilateral, but it doesn't matter. We can use the same rule for a square as the rectangle. So this one will be length by width as well. So this one will be 1.2 by 1.2, which should work out to be 1.4. And then we'll have our, oh sorry, and then we'll have our total area. So our area total we said was going to be area 1 minus area 2. And then we just take our new little values that we've worked out which was this one here and this one here, and we substitute them in. So we've got um, 7.2 minus 1.4, which gives us a total of 5.76 square metres. And we'll just make that nice and clear to our marker that that's our answer with by either underlining it or highlighting it if you've got a highlighter. All right. Now, some of these shapes are going to be add together. So you might have a rectangle with a triangle added to it or something like that. Some of them will be a large shape like this one with a piece missing from it. And you, so you guys can change the rules around. We'll do lots of these. This test's only got one of it, but we'll, we'll add a few extras in, okay? Let's move on. In question two, we introduce the circle. And I'm going to do the second question first because it's clearer. Okay. On your sheet, well, first of all, if we have a look at these two things, there's two different numbers here, and this is the thing that you guys are going to have to first get your heads around. This one here, if it's from the center of the circle out, like this, this is the radius of the circle, and if it goes all the way through the circle from one side to the other, passing through the middle, we call this the diameter. which I've probably spelt wrong. Now, if you have a look at the formula on your formula sheet, you're a little bit limited. It's only got this one here, and at this stage I'm going to cover the circumference first because this will help me to explain what pi is, okay? This question wants me to tell you what the circumference, which is the perimeter of a circle, and the area is. And there's this new thing in here called pi, okay? So if we bring this back over here, we've got a formula that we could use perfectly for this one. This one will be the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. But there's a variant if you want to learn it on this formula where the circumference is also equal to pi times the diameter. It's all pi d. And if you think about that, that makes perfect sense. Because if I doubled this diameter over here, then what I'd actually end up with is 10 and I'd have... Yeah, sorry, if I doubled the radius, it would become the diameter and it would be 10. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the little 2 and R turn into a D instead. So this 2 and this R turn into this D. I won't get too caught up in that. I'm going to start with the second one because this will explain what pi is. We use this funny little symbol here. You'll need a calculator to use it. If you ever get stuck without a calculator, the best number to use for pi is 3.14, which you may or may not remember, but you've got pi on your calculator and you've got it on your phone. And what it says is that if we have a look at the diameter of any circle, the circumference will be 3.14 times longer than the distance across the circle. And it doesn't matter what circle it is, the distance around it will always be 3.14 times bigger. And the best place to think about this is if you have a look at your car tyres when you get home, there'll be a number on it. On mine it's 70. It means the diameter of my tyre is 70 centimetres. So every time my wheel does one full rotation on my car, it actually covers, um, you know, 20... 210 centimetres or something like that, a little bit over. 
So it actually, one spin of my wheel covers two metres, even though it's only 70 centimetres tall. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you ever change wheels on a four-wheel drive or something like that, this becomes relevant. All right, let's get rid of some of this and we'll start answering it. If you don't care about any of that, that's okay. It's really simple. All of these questions are just substitution. All you need to do is just plug it into the formula. So the circumference of this circle will be pi times the diameter, which is 17 centimetres. And then you put it into your calculator and what you'll find is that you'll get a circumference of 53.41 centimetres. Don't forget that the circumference is just a distance. It's as though you're doing one lap of the shape. Okay, It's just a fancy name for the perimeter that we only use for circle. So you've got to give it a, a distance answer. So it's just centimetres. Then when we go to work out the area of this shape, again, go back to your formula sheet. And over here somewhere, you've got this one, the area of a circle. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. Good formula to remember to speed you up in a test, but you will be given it. Again, it's just substitution. Pi times 17 squared. You pop it into your calculator. Oh, sorry, I've just got caught out by my own question here and made a mistake. Is the diameter seven? Uh, sorry, is the radius 17 or is that the diameter? It's the diameter, okay. So if you get given this question, it's a trick that I've just fallen for. And this is 8.5. How do I know it's 8.5? Perfect, it's half of 17, okay. So we'll go 8.5 squared instead. Luckily I can rub out on this. And then if I put that straight into my calculator, what I'll, well, if you want to see what it is, um, I'll write it out this way for you. 8.5 squared is 72.25, but we don't really need to worry about that. If you've got your calculator, you can skip straight to the answer, which is 226.98 square centimetres. Don't forget your units. So we'll just highlight our answers through our marker. You can underline them so it's nice and clear. And we'll dive back to this one. So this one's a bit simpler in some ways because you can just sub it straight into the formula. Just remember, if you can't remember this variation of the formula, this pi b one, you can still use 2 pi r. You've just got to remember to halve the diameter before you start. Okay. So let's go in with this one. This one's really easy because we can just sub straight into this one both times. So the circumference will be 2 times pi times 5. We'll put that straight into our calculator and that will give us the answer 31.42 centimetres. Remember, it's a distance around. That's our answer. Area, go back to your formula sheet and you'll find that the area is pi r squared. Sub straight in, so the area will be pi times 5 squared. Don't forget, if you don't have it, a fancy calculator squared just means that number times pi itself. So this is really the same as pi times 25. And so the area will be 78.54 centimetres squared. This one's an area, so the units are centimetres squared. It's a pretty fast unit, this one. Not a lot of working out, which is really good. Most of it's just substitution straight in. Let's skip over to question four. We've got a couple of triangles. If you think about triangles, these are awesome. Um, the formula makes perfect sense when you have a look at it. The formula of your triangles, again on your formula sheet, so down here is area equals base times height divided by 2. So if we come back up and have a look at this, we've got area equals base times height divided by 2. And you might remember that earlier I said that rectangles are sometimes base times height instead of length times width. If you think about this, it makes perfect sense because this is actually a rectangle. And the triangle makes up half of it. So if you just worked out the area of the rectangle and halved it, then you'd have what the area of the triangle is. So this is what the formula is angling towards. But even when you get weird shapes like this one over here, 
the same formula still works. You just have to be careful because quite often they'll sneak in disinformation. This is totally irrelevant. I don't care what that is. I only care what the base is and the overall height is. And even if this was a scalene triangle like this, I'd still only be chasing the height here and the base here. Okay, That would be all I'd need and the formula always works. It doesn't matter what sort of triangle it is. Get rid of that and we'll do these questions. All right, base times height, substitute in and solve. So the area of this one, again, this is disinformation. I don't care about this. All I care about is the base, which is 5.2, multiplied by the height, 6.1, all divided by 2. No real need to simplify this. Just put it straight into your calculator and your calculator will spit out 15.86 square metres. Don't forget your units. That's your answer. Same deal for the second one. It really is this easy. The area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by 2. Get rid of any information that's irrelevant. That's no longer relevant. That's just disinformation trying to trick you. So the area of this shape, whoa, that's pretty crazy. The area of this shape is the base times the height divided by 2. So we're looking for half of 77. So we're going to find that the area is 38.5 square millimetres. And that one's answered as well. All right. Everyone happy with that? Yep. Awesome. All right, trapeziums, these, one, these ones are the ones that get a bit ugly. So go over and have a bit of a look at your formula. This is really the only one where your formula sheet kind of, you, you're going to really have to use your formula sheet here, okay? When they're talking about the value of A, it's the top line usually, okay? It's this one here, oops, and the base is the bottom one and the height. So it'll be like the triangle. They'll often try and give you information that's totally irrelevant to try and trick you, okay? So this one, when you have a look at the formula, you write it over, area equals the height multiplied by lengths A and B added together, all divided by 2. And now we substitute in. So have a quick look. This is useless information. Get rid of it so it doesn't confuse you. That'll only be useful if you're finding the circumference of it, which we're not being asked to find. So we're going to go area equals height, which is 35, multiplied by 16 plus 30. My touch screen's dying all over 2. And we put that straight into our calculator exactly as you said. Don't forget your brackets, otherwise your calculator will get it wrong. And the answer will be 805 square metres. So all that stuff we were doing in the last unit in algebra with substitution is gearing you up for all of these real useful questions okay, that you'll actually use. All right, next one. We're using a parallelogram this time. This one's nice and easy. Base times height, okay, so back to your formula sheet. It's just like a, um, a rectangle, this one. So your area equals base times height. Again, they're giving you disinformation to try and confuse you. Scribble it out. It's irrelevant to this question. This question really is as easy as base of 42 times the height of 10.5. Pop it into your calculator and you'll get... 441 square millimetres. Oh, and I've made a metres. Don't do that. Alrighty. That's a bit of highlight our answers. That one and that one. Alrighty, moving on. And the last one's volume. So you guys don't have to worry about surface area. That'll sneak up on you next year. At the moment, all we're worried about is the volume of these shapes. And so what they mean by that is how much stuff can you fit in them? if you're filling them up with water basically, or how much space do they take up, okay? So it's a three-dimensional shape. We'll have a look at the formulas and we'll have a look at how to just sub them in and solve them, but I'll try and unpack it a little bit for you and make this make sense so that it's helpful next year. 
If you have a look at the volume for a cylinder, again, nick over to your sheet, and it's pi r squared times d. So the volume of this shape equals pi r squared times d. And it's written without that time sign in the formula sheet, but I want to emphasize this, okay? If you have a look at the next formula as well, the formula for a triangular prism, or so, yeah, for the volume of a triangular prism is base times height divided by 2 times d. Again, a little bit different to how they've written it on the sheet, but it means the same thing. And I want you to really, really, really look at this closely, okay? If you have a look at that formula, what it's saying in the cylinder is it's saying the area of the circle, that's this part here, okay, multiplied by how deep the shape is here, okay? And if you have a look at the rectangular, sorry, the triangular prism as well, there's the area for a triangle here. So that's saying, what's the area of this triangle multiplied by how deep the shape is here? And that way, if you get your head around the fact that all of these volume formulas, instead of relying on the sheet for them, next year when I give you a composite shape like this, and I ask you what the volume of this shape is, you guys won't be freaked out by it because all you need to do is work out what the surface area of the composite shape is and then multiply it by how deep it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's a much better way of thinking about it. And the people who get addicted to using the formula sheets on these for volumes end up falling over in year 10. So this is a good thing just to keep in the back of your mind. All right, let's just sub in and finish it. So the volume of this shape is pi times... R, and this time I'm going to check for the radius. It is the radius, so it's 5.5 .5 squared multiplied by 31, which is the depth. Just pop it straight into your calculator. If you haven't found pi yet, it's down the bottom, and you usually have to push shift or second function first, and you'll find that that is 2,946.03 cubic centimetres. Did you notice the units this time are cubic centimetres? There's a little cube sign up there. So when you're going for volume, it's going to be cubes. Last question on the sheet, doing really well. The volume of the triangular prism is going to be the base of the triangle, which is 12, multiplied by its height of 5, divided by 2, and then multiplied by how deep the shape is. 15. So again, they've given you a little bit of cheeky disinformation here. Just ignore that. It's not useful to you. Put this into your formula or into your calculator and you'll get 450 cubic metres. And you're all done.